Because it's episodic, you can explore any area because you have the time to do that. You can take risks on the kinds of storytelling that you're doing. Seth Gable. You're listening to Writing Roots, brought to you by Aspen House Publishing. Welcome to Writing Roots. I'm Lee Hull. And I'm Lee Esses. If you've been following the news in the writing world and you're keeping up on all of the interesting things that are happening, awesome, good for you. One of those things is that Amazon is coming out with a new way to publish your stories, and that's called Vela. This is a format that releases in an episodic or serial fashion, where you release a chapter at a time, a episode at a time. You might be familiar with this kind of storytelling in other areas, other websites, like Royal Road, Wattpad, and fanfiction websites. So what exactly is episodic or serial storytelling? When people ask me that question, the first place I point them to is their favorite TV show, whatever it is. You have a bunch of little moments each episode that builds to a greater story. And at the end of every season, you accomplish something, you defeat the main villain for the whole season, and then you start fresh on the next season after that. So every season, especially in more epic storytelling, this doesn't apply so much to sitcoms, but in your dramas, crime dramas, fantasy, sci-fi sort of shows, you'll have a season where you have a story arc over that entire season. That's kind of like the novel, where all of these things together would equal a novel. But the episodes have their own mini stories in them. The challenge of figuring out this murderer, the challenge of going out onto this world to fix a problem. So in your TV shows, you have the challenge of finding a babysitter for the wedding. And then the next challenge is maybe finding the dress of the wedding. And all of the drama that surrounds that, there should still be a problem and solution per episode, plus a problem and solution per season. And they can directly interact or not, depending on if it's a quote-unquote filler episode or if it's one that's essential to the story. If your main characters are gathering spell ingredients so that at the end of the season they can cast a spell, some of the episodes they can collect a spell ingredient and then some of them they just happen to save people. So this style is the self-contained adventures in a larger story. You can skip the larger story, but every episode contains the same characters who develop in these individual episodes through whatever challenges they have to face. This is a little closer to your sitcoms where they have no real series story arc, but they do have episode story arcs. In the pre-Netflix era, especially in the middle of the season, there was a mentality of making sure your character is pretty much the same at the beginning and end of the story. So that if your audience misses an episode, for whatever reason, they aren't completely lost. Which is the struggle I had when I attempted to write an episodic type story. It ended up not being episodic, it ended up being climactic, which is the other version. Because each episode was vital to continuing the story forward. The biggest element, though, regardless of how you choose to tell the story, whether you are telling little episodes in a larger arc or just little episodes, these stories are released over time. It's not releasing the box set. You're not releasing a novel. You are releasing a chapter, a single part of the story at a time. It could be weekly, it could be monthly, it could be daily, but you're only releasing one piece at a time. And as a marketer, that schedule, whatever your schedule is, is important to keep to because your audience 
is going to go, oh, goody, it's Thursday. I get another episode of Writing Roots because they've come to expect this to happen on Thursdays. They can look forward to it. We'll get a little bit more into how to use it, making sure you stick to that schedule a little bit later in this episode. So let's get into the common genres of this episodic storytelling. This is really, really common in fan fiction. That goes back to the missing a piece and still continuing the story. So while these characters were in Iowa, they also happened to conquer this vampire. But we didn't see that in the larger story because my fan fiction is inserted into a moment in the larger story. And aside from that, at least in the online versions of episodic storytelling, fan fiction almost set the bar because you had websites like fanfiction.net where people would get on, they'd post a chapter, work on the next chapter in their story arc that they created, whether it is inserted into the actual storyline from canon or an alternate universe, an alternate telling that they're creating of their own. And they'd release a chapter at a time. So fan fiction was really, really common and still is very common for this episodic storytelling sort of thing. And that is one thing I have to say is a lot of these you'll find are online because online made it so much easier. Before episodic storytelling used to be mostly just in comic books you know, an issue would have the episode and then a comic book run would have the whole story. Going back a little bit further, Sherlock Holmes also was one of many periodicals that behaved like TV shows where you would pick up the newspaper every week to see what happened to this fictional character this week. Which is why another common genre for this is short story detectives. So Sherlock Holmes, one of my favorite examples is actually inside the Mistborn world from Brandon Sanderson in Era 2. He'll have clippings from the newspaper that have this episodic tale of this fictional character. So we're seeing little pieces of this episodic story being published in this fictional newspaper. It's so much fun. If we want to go really far back in history, this is actually one of the oldest types in the mythos and therefore it's been sort of revived in fantasy but a lot of your iliad your odyssey have this episodic structure where yes they are on their way home but they're going to encounter a cyclops and then the sirens and then and then and then each little bite is an episode and i think part of that is because back in the day storytelling was mostly oral storytelling And you couldn't tell a huge, long, big tale in a day. So they'd break it down to telling this little part. And then the next day they would tell the next part. And the next day they would tell the next part, which is actually the framework for an example that we're going to talk about a little bit later that we talked about in an earlier episode of Story Within a Story. Again, common websites for this are Vela, which is the new Amazon serial You have Royal Road, you have Wattpad, Reddit has a Reddit serials section. I believe Archive of Our Own does something similar, right? Yes, that is one of the fanfiction versions, Archive of Our Own, fanfiction.net. All of these are ways that people can release a serialized story. You may or may not know that most of the Lord of the Rings realm including The Hobbit and Silmarillion and all of these, were actually stories that Tolkien would tell to his son, Christopher. But they were bedtime stories, something that he would tell a little bit every night, and then the next day go and write them down. This is actually one of those where the structure of, especially The Hobbit, was very episodic, because then they'd go and visit the trolls, then he'd go and find the ring, then he'd do this and do that. Yeah, if you look at it, Every chapter is broken into its own contained adventure. Another older one, going back to almost the mythos, is the Arabian Nights, 
where she would tell different stories every single night. And one of the most modern examples is actually The Martian. It started as a web serial self-published by the author, became a book, and then eventually became a movie. And of course, the classic when it comes to the crime dramas was Sherlock Holmes. So if you're looking for a good example of how this built a fandom, Sherlock Holmes is a great way to do that. This structure, though, this episodic, the serial storytelling, is not just a novel broken up into chapters. I do not recommend this for trying to release your book. Don't just release an actual chapter at a time. There's a thing with episodic structure where there should be some sort of satisfaction, maybe a cliffhanger after the satisfaction, but some kind of satisfaction at the end of every episode. If you're just breaking the book up into a lot of different chapters, there's no satisfaction, no drive to tune in next week to see if Batman is going to blah, blah, blah. Batman at least caught this bad guy this episode while he's still out looking for the Joker. This is also not a time to be just releasing your unconnected short stories. You absolutely can release your short stories, but it's not in this category of episodic or serial. They need to be connected in some kind of way, whether it is the characters are the same and they're just experiencing a different adventure. It could be unconnected in that way. Or they are short stories, but you need to have a framework around it, which we'll talk about in a minute. There is a, I believe it's a Netflix, it might be Amazon show called Love, Sex, and Robots, where each episode is a different art style, different story, different characters, and they're connecting features basically just sci-fi. There's nothing else that connects the pieces. I've only seen a couple episodes of Black Mirror, but as far as I can tell, it's another one of those just releasing a bunch of short stories. It's possible they're connected, and I just haven't noticed it yet. But independent short stories that don't connect together ends up being an anthology, and that's a book more than it is this episodic series. Yeah. Love, Sex, and Robots, Black Mirror... They tend to have similar themes, like Black Mirror is mostly, you know, psychological thriller. It's an exploratory way of looking into what humans are capable of doing, the darkest side of humans. So they're connected in that theme, but it's not a cohesive storyline. And along with that, making sure that it's still a cohesive, connected storyline between all of these pieces, all these chapters that you're releasing. A serial format, Vela, Wattpad, Royal Road, these are not just places to dump your unused and unedited story ideas. These should definitely be polished, but I see a lot of people approaching the episodic structure with novels going, I will call it book one, and then once book one is wildly popular, then I'll proceed to book two. This is not that kind of thing on a shorter scale. You should have the whole series plotted out in some regard. Even if you're a pantser, you know that they're going to catch the serial killer at the end. So make sure you have an idea of where you're going. You're editing the stories I look back on what I did in my fan fiction when I was in high school and publishing it, and I just absolutely cringe because I think one of the habits a lot of people have, especially with internet serials, is they look at it as the perfect place to put their story out into the world without much consequence. But if you treat this episodic storytelling, these serials, as a way to gain a following, you aren't going to do that with unpolished works. You need to spend the time to edit, to craft your story, and make sure that it is cohesive. Make sure you are going somewhere with it. 
and not just releasing your characters into a sandbox to do whatever they want with no goal in mind. There is no part of that that helps people continue the story, helps people stay attached and wonder and think about your story when they're driving or in the shower or whatever else. That being said, a lot of the glory of the episodic structure is you, the author, get to explore. A lot of the structures that we approached this series include a small bit that this is how you can tell a story in a smaller amount. Half of the examples I came up with for Rashomon were from TV shows. Half of the amnesia type stories came from an episodic structure. If you want to dabble in all of these, except for maybe the interactive, episodic could be a fun way to do it. But make sure that these episodes are still satisfying. You don't want to tease to the next one and have that next one be a dud. You also want to make sure that you are teasing to the next one. So every individual story arc needs to have some kind of resolution, some kind of solution within it. But you have that yes, but that allows you to tease to that next one. So not including the tease works really well in a binging world where people just sit down and keep watching. But if you're releasing your story over time, that doesn't work as well. So you need those teases. You need to have an idea of where you're going, even you pantsers out there. And your audience hopefully has that idea too. So while we're encountering Irene this episode, Moriarty is still out there. But you still have a lot of freedom. This is where it differs a lot from TV episodes because you're not limited to a 25 or 50 minute time slot. You have absolute freedom in exploring a little longer story, doing a little shorter story, having fun with those filler episodes where it's maybe not satisfying the overall plot, but they're still doing something. So how do I use it? I have this idea for these characters that are all going to do this certain thing, a secret society. How do I make that into an episodic structure? So there are three basic plot structures that you can use for a serialized storytelling. You have the overarching plot, which is every episode has a distinct adventure, but they all contribute to the larger story, much like The Hobbit, where every chapter they defeat the trolls. They have to escape the elves. They have to do this. They have to do this. But it's all working towards that final ending, that resolution to the overarching plot. Another type of structure is the serialized structure. You're going to see this more often with book serials than you will with like episodes. Each episode is basically a standalone. You don't need to watch them in order. You don't need to pick up the books and line them up. You don't need to worry about missing something because each bit is its own adventure and the only thing connecting them are the characters. An example of that would be Sherlock Holmes or perhaps Jack Reacher. These are my kind that I do most often, but having something that connects the bits and pieces helps readers find other bits and pieces in that story. And the third structure that you can use is the framing. It's that story within a story we talked about a few episodes ago. So the frame is the larger story. Scheherazade telling the stories to keep the king from killing her. You have that start of her, I've never actually read this, so I apologize if, if I'm wrong, of her entering the king's chamber to begin telling him the story. And then the rest of that episode is this self-contained short story. And then it ends again in that zoomed out framing until the next episode. Another example of this would be the Canterbury Tales, where you have the framing of they're all headed to their destination, Canterbury, 
but each person is telling a different story in order to keep them entertained. So once you decide what structure you want to use to tell the serialized story, then you need to develop the plot. Are you going to have a large plot that connects everything? Or are you going to focus on the characters connecting everything? Decide on that connection and then make sure you stick with it. Don't decide halfway through that you no longer want to have that overarching story plot. You don't want to leave your readers wondering what happened to Moriarty. Not that Doyle treated Moriarty that way, but most other versions of Sherlock Holmes have Moriarty lurking in the background. One of the huge advantages to this episodic type structure is each episode, you get to dabble with a slightly different character. So if you've seen the TV show Lost, about a third of the show is flashbacks, what the characters were doing before they got to the island. And each episode focuses on a different character that's trapped in the island. So if you are one of those people who likes to write lots of different points of view, this might be a structure that lends itself to that kind of story. So you have that overarching plot, but especially in an episodic, you have a lot of subplots. Every episode is kind of a subplot if you're using the overarching plot structure. You want to make sure those have some kind of value. Even if it's a filler episode, it needs to be contributing something to that end plot, whether it is a character development or an item obtainment, something needs to connect it to that overarching plot more than just the characters if that's the plot device, the structure you've chosen to use. One of my first dabblings into plotting a story and writing a script especially came during the 2007 writer's strike. So I was avidly watching a TV show, I believe it was Numbers, which is a crime drama. And because they didn't have any writers during the writer's strike, I thought it might be fun to write an episode. It was not good. I don't even think I have it anymore. But... If that's the case, I would have had to have left blank spots for when they talk about the larger plot for the season. So you have a moment where Sam and Dean are in the car in Supernatural, where they're going, well, Cass is off doing this, and Jack is off doing this, and Crowley's doing this, so we're going to go hunt this nest of vampires in the meantime. And you have moments where you can refer back to the big plot without compromising your episode's plot. And as we mentioned a little earlier, the key, absolute key to a successful serialized story is a release schedule. I know we say make sure you write at a completely different phase than you market. I think mixing those tends to result in disaster more often than not. But in the case of an episodic structure, you kind of have to do both. Now, we will go over some tips for maintaining that episodic structure, but know that if you want a following and that is your goal, having a release schedule helps people know when to check back with whatever your outlet is. We all know life happens. Things come up, they get in the way. But you need to try as hard as you can to stick to that schedule that you've chosen. If you think you can crank out one a day, that is awesome, amazing. I really hope you are also focusing enough time on editing it to polish it up. Think realistically, though. How much time does it take you to write 5,000 words? How much time does it take you to edit 5,000 words? Again and again, and again. Are you going to send this to an independent editor before you post it online? Give yourself that time and that freedom so you can make sure that you're releasing the best possible quality item on your schedule. And if you can, try to work ahead of where you are. So be writing 
a couple of chapters ahead of what you're releasing. So we are recording this episode in the beginning of August, even though it's not releasing till the very end of August. We're working on getting notes together right now for September, including the end of September. Having all of this figured out well enough ahead of time gives you the freedom to do something well, not just dump something out. And it gives you that freedom when life happens. So a couple of weeks ago, I was camping while episodes were releasing, and I'm usually the one that gets them posted online. And if we hadn't been ahead of schedule on recording, we wouldn't have met our schedule because I would have been out of town while we needed to record two different episodes. That's not to say we're always on the ball. We have recorded the day before something is released and just done a very fast, stayed up late edit. But that's not recommended. Yes. It is very stressful. It doesn't usually end with a very good quality product. And that's the goal of your serialized, of your episodic, to gain a following. If you aren't producing quality content, you aren't going to be gaining a very big following. One of the conversations you and I had prior to putting this podcast together was how frequently do we want to release? Which days do we want to release on? How long do we want the episodes to be? And since I talk a lot, we've kind of pushed the brand a little bit and we very rarely do 10 minute episodes they're more often about 12 minutes but we had the conversation do we want to do it once a week or twice a week or once a month or how much do we want to do how much content do we want to ingest and how much content do we have the time to create well another thing that you'll want to consider is how you're going to structure the names of the story. What are you going to call every chapter that you release? Are they going to be sectioned off in little parts? And we had to have this kind of conversation for our own podcast, actually. So as we talked about the overarching plot versus the individual episodes, which is the episodic structure, we decided to do two episodes a week so that we could get almost 10 episodes per month, and then we can do one series per month. And we can focus in on one facet of storytelling per month. That played a lot into not only how long it was, because we wanted to make sure we had the time to produce these with quality, but also the types of stories that we do. So this whole month we've been talking about playing with structure. And we're ending with our bonus episode of episodic structure, which is going to be one of the biggest kinds that you will not only write, but see out there. Like we mentioned at the beginning, the reason why we are talking about the serial episodic story structure is because Amazon released Vela. While it's not the very first of its kind, again, we talked about Wattpad, we talked about Royal Road and other websites that you can do this on. Vela is making this a little bit more normalized for other authors because KDP is so popular. Vela is now connected to that same system. So people are seeing this new way that they can start telling their story. It's also giving authors of this particular type a way to monetize it. Back in the day, the person printing it would pay the author for this and then people would purchase the newspaper or periodical in order to find out what happens to Sherlock Holmes. Now you have a blog and it's very difficult to monetize. So Vela is a way of doing that. However, this tool specifically is not available worldwide yet. So if you want to get into a serialized format, Check out some of the other websites we mentioned, explore a little bit, and see what you can do on those. But we're going to talk specifically right now about Vela because a lot of people have a lot of questions about how it works. So we're going to get into the suggestions from Vela given by Amazon and Kindlepreneur. We chose this month to do this particular series 
specifically because Vela is coming out and we wanted to do this as our bonus episode. So we assume a lot of you are actually listening to this episode for these next few tips, which start with understanding why you write an episodic. If you intend to publish through Vela, it is built and designed to be something that makes engagement for your readers. You can connect with your readers on a different level. They're able to comment. They're able to give feedback. They're able to let you know what they like and don't like in a way that's very difficult for books and Kindle currently. So you're building engagement. You're building an audience. So if you do choose to release a novel, suddenly you have an audience that will buy it because you've built it through the serial. That is one amazing thing about serials is they really build audiences. But because it's about engagement, one of the suggestions that they have is you don't include links or prompting readers to leave the reading experience. You want to keep them in the story. You want to keep them driving forward. So especially if they're quote unquote binging to catch up to where you are, they aren't being distracted along the way by other shinies that you've thrown in. I did do some research into how this works and readers will purchase coins, tokens, in order to unlock episodes. And then some of that money can go back to the author. Of course, if they're continuously tuning in episode after episode, then eventually you'll gain a little bit more per reader than you might with a single book. Amazon also includes features where it helps the reader stay connected with what you're currently doing. So we highly suggest having a calendar, a release schedule, but through Vela, they will also notify of new releases if they follow the story. So they can actively follow one single storyline. There's a little bit of a difficulty in some other websites that don't have the same kind of connected ability where they don't have, you know, this is the main story and then here are all the episodes or chapters within it. And like most social media sites, you can favorite episodes, you can give them a thumbs up, and that's kind of the rating and ranking system that Amazon will have for exploring and finding new serials. Now, in pursuit of this connection, between author and reader that they are hoping to build with Vela. They have what they call author notes. At the end of every episode, you can write a note directly to your readers. You can comment and start some of that conversation directly with your readers. They don't allow links or pictures or other stuff in there because, again, they don't want to direct people away from Vela. But You as the author, if you need your readers to know something, this is an opportunity for that. It helps build that relationship between the author and audience. I'm kind of curious to see how this is going to be used because back in my fan fiction days, I would include little notes about why it was so late or kind of what I was doing at that time in my life. So I'm curious to see what people are going to use author notes for. And along with having that connection with the audience, this gives a way for authors to get direct feedback. Almost kind of like having your own personal beta readers. Don't treat it like that because that's not what this is. Because you are building that author audience relationship through author notes, through the voting systems, this allows you to see feedback about the little segments of those stories. And I really hope that the community rises to the challenge and makes this constructive feedback. If you look at most fan fiction websites and others of this style with the serialized That tends to be what happens. Surprisingly, 
there are very few negative experiences that people have with the comments and interactions on their stories because people are invested in wanting to make the story better. So they will give constructive feedback. And if you are out there and you are wanting to read stories on Vela, if you give feedback, make sure that it is constructive. Always be constructive and supportive because you don't want to discourage authors from pursuing their writing careers. Readers breed readers. Authors are not in competition with each other because the more someone reads, the more someone reads. So helping everyone get better is really one of my favorite things about this community. We do have some tips and tricks we encourage you to keep in mind as you're writing episodes for Vela. And it starts with the episode should be between 600 and 5,000 words long. So this is mostly in your short story fiction category. You're basically writing short stories to be released. You don't want it to be flash fiction because that's too short. It's unsatisfying. You don't want to release novellas or novelitas, as I've seen some of them called, because that's too long and people just don't spend that much time reading on a screen. Because people are paying for episodes with these tokens, you want to make sure they feel like they're getting their money's worth. But it's not a time suck like some people think reading novels can be. Another suggestion that they have is to at least get five episodes that you can release immediately. For one, this helps give you motivation to not release one and then just forget about it. But if you can release five episodes to start, it gives enough for people to read really tell if they're going to be interested in continuing, and hopefully by the end of those five, they're willing to stick around and wait for your release schedule. And wonderfully, Vela has scheduling options. Yes. I don't know how we would do this podcast without the scheduling ability on WordPress. It is incredibly useful to create a whole bunch of content at once and then release it bit by bit Because when you're inspired, you want to do it all, which is great, but you can't maintain that. So doing the work in bursts helps you not only be efficient with your time, but releasing on a schedule helps you keep audiences. And this ability to submit to Vela and then schedule to release on a specific day, especially if you're doing that five episodes to start with a few scheduled out, that gives you time to continue writing and working on what's next so that you're always ahead of schedule. So you have a couple of episodes already scheduled out so that if something happens in your life, you're not scrambling and leaving your readers without content. Along those same lines, understand that the readers get the first three episodes for free. So do not make your first three episodes all about the world building backstory. You want to make sure you grab their attention in ideally the first episode, even better the first sentence, but do not spend that time until much later and you already have the audience's buy-in. We always suggest avoiding filling in backstory, but this is an issue I guarantee I will see with the less experienced authors is that they will not catch my attention in the first three episodes because they want to make sure I know all of this other information first and I will not be interested. Absolutely do not make your first episode a prologue. Serials are not the time for prologues. Lee would argue that there's never a time for them, but definitely not here. Get into the action, get into the plot immediately so that by the end of those first three episodes, your readers are addicted and they want to continue. They're willing to pay to read more. The last little tip we got from both Amazon and Kindlepreneur was to make sure you have a story image. Normally in your writing process, you don't really get a book cover until you're ready to start marketing. 
In this case, you're marketing right off the bat. That means having that story image that is clean so it can be seen on something as small as my cell phone, but eye-catching enough to maintain the brand and get people to see even that color combination and think your story. Be warned. Unlike books, ebook covers, or website banners, Vela images need to work on a circular canvas. So it's more like an icon and it's going to be small. So you don't want a lot of small writing. You want something fairly high contrast so it's easy to read and recognize immediately. I'm going to reiterate circular canvas. That means it's like a profile picture, not necessarily squarish like a standard cover would be. Hopefully, we have helped introduce you to the world of Vela, of serial and episodic storytelling, and given you a new thing to explore. Because this is one of those that if you, like me, struggle a little bit sitting down and writing an entire novel, this could be your outlet, where you're better at that short story format but you still have this general story you want to tell, maybe try out a serial. But if you're going to do it right ahead of time, get a lot of those episodes written before you decide to throw it up online. Some people, I'm looking at one, really thrive on deadlines. Having those deadlines saying this needs to be out by this time can be incredibly helpful. I would suggest if you're doing this to set your personal deadlines for completing the first draft, at least a week, depending on your writing style, before the episode should be released. Set your own deadlines and stick to them because you don't want to edge yourself into a corner and especially don't do it repeatedly because then you'll start to dislike it. It feels like a burden. We want you to enjoy it. We want you to have fun with it. And most importantly, we want you to write selfishly. If you have a question or comment for our hosts or a topic you'd like us to cover, send us an email at writingroots at aspenhousepublishing.com or find us on Facebook by searching for Aspen House Publishing.